Mikhail, great to speak to you. I'm from Malaysia, long, long way away. So um, I want to get to know you a bit better. Mm. Can you name me three films and three TV shows that tell me a little bit about you? It's a hard question. If you want to get to know me, I have to be very honest then. OK. I can't remember the last time that I watched a movie full. So when it's half movie, I fall asleep. Because normally I watch him in the evening with my family. OK. And I'm nagged, and I fall asleep. That's, that's the, the honest answer. <laughs> what about growing up? There must yeah, have been no, something. For sure. Gladiator is my favorite film. Good that's choice. Sure. Gladiator's number one. Yes. Number what one. about TV shows? Because Spain pump out some good TV shows. Well, America. La Casa de Papel, it has to be one of the favorites one. One that I really loved, it was during COVID. Uh, it was when I started my, my managerial career. It was Ted Lasso. Yes. And just looking at uh, my profession, our industry from a different angle, different perception, and in a different way, I think it was... Uh, it was great for me to watch it, you know, that sometimes we take ourselves too seriously mm. and sometimes there is another way of doing things that can be very, very effective as well. And um, it was a good learning. Did you meet him, the actor? Yes, I did, did, yeah. And some of them are big Arsenal fans and they've been here, so That's it was great. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, how do you unwind then? I know being a manager is a full-time role. Mm. You're probably thinking about it when you go home, but if you have mm. to switch off, what do you do? But I do it in... In my normal day, I do have a lot of moments that I switch off because you see Mikel, the manager, or he's coaching, or he's on the pitch, and whatever. But in the corridors, when I'm sitting with a player, when I'm talking to a staff member, that's Mikel. And so mm -hmm. then they know me since I was a player here. And I'm, then I'm off. I'm not constantly being the man having lunch in the table. And, uh, and I love those moments as well. And, uh, and obviously, when I have time for myself, you know, when I leave the training ground, when I leave the stadium, and then. Yeah, I'm a father, I'm a husband, uh, I'm a brother, I'm a son, and, uh, and I love that part of me. I have a lot of friends, I'm very lucky to do that. And I just try to have a normal life. I wouldn't miss my boy training mm. in the park or going to a game if I have the time to do it because of, of my role, because um, I know how important it was for me to have my parents there, and, and I love that part of, of being with them as well. On that topic, can we go back to the Basque region? Because there seems to be this explosion of managers mm -hmm. from, from the Basque region. The population is slightly over 2 million, but yeah. yourself, Emery, Alonso, your childhood friend, Iriola, Bournemouth. Is there something in the water there? Because <laughs> the, the Basque region is churning out exceptional mm -hmm. managers. I think there is something in the culture um, and the passion about football that, uh, that you can sense and you can breathe and smell. Um, in our region, that's for sure. And, uh, and we've been touched by that since we were very little. And then I think we've been raised in a way that um, education is key. Um, the values of hard work and, uh, and being consistent and earning uh, the right to get things uh, with effort and, uh, and being persistent is very important. And, and I think as there are qualities that are very important for a manager. Great values there. Yeah. Uh, what about your time at Barcelona, everyone mm. mentions how you were at City and you had, you had a great relationship with Pep Guardiola and success. Mm. But I want to go back even further. The Barcelona DNA, Johan Cruyff and, and his philosophy, does that have an impact on you now? Well, he had since I was six, seven years old. I fell in love with that team, with Johan. Pep was part of that team. Um, then at 14, I had the chance to go to Barcelona. It was my dream. I had the best time of my life, I always said, since I was 14 till 17 over there. Um, to make the next and most difficult step in, in the professional career. Um, and from there, I start mm -hmm. to fly different parts of the world, different clubs, and, um, and enjoy this incredible job that we have. That's brilliant. Um, you also spent some time in Spain. It was on loan, wasn't it, when you yeah. were in Barcelona? I was looking at your team sheets, Pochettino, Nelka, Cocha, Ronaldinho. Yeah. What was it like to play with all of those players who have gone <laughs> become legends in their own right? Mm. Incredible, and it was my first, uh, with Ronnie, with Anelka, with uh, Heinz Pochettino, it was my first experience um, as a professional player, and uh, yeah, I was blessed because they, they took me under the arm as well, and they really look after me, and uh, you really need that when you start uh, that professional career in the beginning. Was Ronaldinho that player throughout your entire history that you just watched in training? I've never seen something like it. Really? It was incredible. He was 19, 20 years old at that time, and... Um, 
I never seen anybody do the, the kind of things he could do with that ball at that pace. This is a tricky question. Yeah. You've played with some fantastic players in various countries, various leagues. Who's your dream fiber side team? Of your teammates? Ronaldinho, surely. Ronaldinho has to be there. Um, Thierry Henry has to be there, that's for sure. Um, Iniesta has to be there, for sure. There's a lot of Barcelona DNA right here. <laughs> Um, Arsenal, I'm going to put Roy Van Persie there as well because he was in his best prime when when we were teammates. You and don't have uh, a goalkeeper. I don't know if you want to go all out. <laughs> you could get one spot left. I'm going to put Pepe Reina then. Another Barcelona boy as well. Yes. Great, great choice, great decision. Um, you're speaking about all these players, and one word I keep hearing over and over again is world class. Mm. I'm sure you know in reference to who. What mm. is your definition of world class? Because I think it differs from person to person. At the end, it's a, it's a very consistent player that can win football matches um, almost on his own. But then probably that defines better an attacking player than a world-class goalkeeper. But then he would say, OK, that he can win you the game with two or three actions in, in the game. And that happens in the Premier League level, then in the European level, then with national team level. Um, but it has to be, first of all, someone extremely consistent and someone that can define a game, that's for sure. So consistency is always the key, yeah, perpetually the key. What about time given to talents to develop and also to managers as well? Uh, mm -hmm. Julian Nagelsmann now with Germany, he was speaking about this, uh, that his former club, Bayern, perhaps weren't giving time to managers, but he said yourself, I think. He said Klopp, he said Guardiola, time is needed for managers. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it not done enough in the current footballing climate? Probably we would like more, uh, but the demands are so high. Mm. I think uh, I think last year there were 16 changes uh, head coaches in in the Premier League, which is incredibly high. Um, at the same time, we have to earn it. We are here to win. If we don't win enough full matches, we are out. We know this is part of our our profession. Um, but then I think you have to understand the context. We are giving more time because everybody's very clear that he's going to need time or do you just think that okay everything is in place you bring the manager he's going to click we spend a lot of money and there we go so time as well can be uh, very different in in different places